Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating an abstract spline effect in Cinema 4D. This tutorial was sponsored by CGToots.com, the web's best source of CG and digital art tutorials and resources. On the CG Toots website, you can find content and tutorials from all the best artists out there and easily find the information you need. The CG Toots team carefully curates the content so everything is the highest quality. And their advanced search features mean you won't need to spend hours searching the web for the help you need. Their site also has some epic features for organizing your favorite tutorials, and you can create watch lists, playlists, or even your own channels. If you want to stay up to date with the latest tutorials, news, resources, courses, and inspirations, you can also sign up for their free weekly newsletter and get all the information you need delivered straight to your inbox. Check out cgtoots.com today and start learning. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. So this tutorial was based on this artwork by Noah Nelson, who was good enough to collaborate with us to bring you this video. There's a link below to Noah's Instagram page where you can find his original artwork and a bunch of other cool designs. So make sure you go and check him out. Big thanks, Noah. If you've created a cool effect and you'd like to collaborate with us on a tutorial for the channel, just get in touch on social media or at cgshortcuts.com forward slash contact. Okay, let's hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can create this awesome dynamic spline effect. So to kick things off, we're going to need a spline. And we're actually going to use our old mate here, the helix, but we want our spiral resting on the ground. So we just need to rotate this guy and we can do that by just changing the plane axis from XY to XZ. Okay, and we also want one end of our helix to be right in the middle. So we'll zero out the end radius. And then we want our spiral to be flat. So we'll also zero out the height. And that gives us our basic starting point. Although I think we can make this spiral a few more times. So we just need to crank up the end angle. Let's make this 3,500 degrees. All right, if we zoom in here, the center of our spiral is looking a bit jagged. So we'll also need to up the subdivisions. And we want it to be fairly smooth, but the higher we make this, the slower the simulation is going to be. So let's just try 200. Okay, so let's make this dynamic. We'll right click on our helix and in simulation tags, we'll make this a soft body. And we'll head over to the collision tab. The key to this effect is to make sure you've got the self collision switched on because we need all of the parts of the helix to collide with itself. And it's actually on by default anyway. So let's head over to the soft body tab. And we've covered most of these settings in other tutorials. So I'll quickly just put some values in here that work the best for me. We'll make structural 50 so it can bend on itself more. And so it doesn't lose energy while it's deforming. We'll bring the damping down to zero. And we'll kill the shearing. And bring the flexion down a tad. And finally, we'll remove the damping on that guy too. Okay, before we sim this, we want our spline to wiggle around on the floor. So we need to bring a floor in for it to interact with. So we'll grab one of those and he needs a simulation tag as well. This time we'll use a collider body and we'll give this a play and see how our sim's looking. So the spline's interacting with the floor, but the only force that's acting on it is gravity, which is why it's not doing too much. It's just being pulled downward. So we need to bring in some other forces to give this a bit of turbulent motion. But first, we'll head over to the collision tab of our floor collider body and just tweak how these interact with each other. We'll bring the bounce all the way down and we'll double our friction. And now we can bring in some forces to influence the shape of our spline. So with our soft body tag selected, we'll head over to the simulate menu and down to forces and we can tear this off and these are the forces we can choose from. And because we're going for a turbulent kind of motion, I think the turbulence force is probably a good option. So let's see how that affects things. And we're starting to get some wiggly shapes in there, but it looks a little too subtle for my liking. Let's make things a bit more turbulent. Let's stop that. And we'll increase the scale of our turbulence and the strength. And we'll reseam that. And that's looking a bit more interesting. 
We're starting to get some cool organic looking shapes in there now, but the movement might be a tad fast. So we'll stop that and we'll just bring the frequency down. And we'll try that. Okay, I think that's going to work for us. And we could even restrict our turbulence so it only affects the middle part of our helix. And that should stop the whole thing from collapsing in on itself. Let's rewind that. And we can do this over in the fall off tab. And we want our fall off to happen within a sphere of influence. So we'll change this from linear to a spherical field. And we might just make that sphere a tad bigger. And now if we hit play, that turbulence is only affecting the middle part. And we don't need to stop there. Let's layer in another force. So we'll grab our soft body tag again. And this time we'll bring in a field force, which is a pretty new addition to Cinema 4D. If we head over to the object tab, this force allows us to use our fields as a force, which sounds really confusing, I know, but if we try one of these, it'll probably make a bit more sense in action. Let's go with the formula field, which generates a wavy effect. And you'll see if we hit play, that wavy effect is now also influencing the motion of our splines, and it's definitely adding a bit more detail. Okay, let's stop it there. We've got a little bit of an issue here where the spline is overlapping itself. So if we switch to the front view, you can see this is just because our spline is being displaced in the Y axis as well. So we'll head back to our perspective view. And a quick way we can fix this is just by adding another fall off to our field force as well. And this time we'll use a box shaped fall off. Then we'll switch to the top view. And I just want our box to encompass the whole helix. So we'll just adjust the X and Z values here, something like that. Then back to our front view, we want the height of our box to be super close to the spline. So we'll bring this down to three. So hopefully this will limit those waves within this box so they can't go higher and create that overlapping. Okay, one more thing I wanna do before we resim this is I want the wave effect to be a little less intense. And we can do that back here by just lowering the opacity of the formula field. All right, let's give that a go. And that is a pretty cool looking effect, but we could still add one more level of randomness to our animation. And what better to do that with than bringing in a random field. And I think leaving the mode set to max should be okay. Let's just see what it's doing. And it's giving us this larger random distortion across everything which again, I think makes it look a little bit more organic. And you don't need to follow my example exactly here. You can go nuts with these settings and experiment till you get the exact look you like. I found changing the noise type to turbulence looks pretty cool as well. And I also brought the scale down and I also animated the random noise. And you could even make it loop. Let's just make it loop every 24 frames or every second. And that gives you something like this. And you could tweak this forever, really. Maybe we'll make the random effect a little bit lower and increase the whole effect together. And that's pretty much how I created the effect in my render. So all that's left to do is to give this spline some thickness. And to do that, we actually need to bring in a connect object and we can grab our helix and bring that in here as the connection object. And now we can apply an extrude to the connect object itself now that it's connected to our spline. And it actually creates a bit of weirdness to begin with, but that's just because we're extruding on the wrong axis. We need the extruding upward, so we'll change that from the Z axis to the Y axis. And that is pretty much it for this effect. But before you render, you might want to just smooth this out a bit. So we could come up here and add a subdivision surface. And that's looking a bit better. And another thing I did was to add a bit of thickness to the extrusion. And we can do that by adding a cloth surface to our hierarchy up here. And in this version of Cinema 4D, you can find that guy up here. So we'll bring that in. And we don't need any more subdivisions, so let's get rid of that. And here is where we can add some thickness. Let's try a value of 0.2 centimeters. And now my friend, you have completed this effect. 
So let's frame this up and take a look at what we've got here. Beautiful. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time, and you can get the full Octane Render Ready project files with all the materials and lighting from our Patreon page. Huge thank you to all of this month's patrons, and here's a list of all of you lovely people. Thanks heaps for your support, and we definitely couldn't do these tutorials without you. Before we wrap things up, I'll also just mention that we finally launched our brand new website and super cool training platform where you can find all of our courses and a bunch of new ones that we've teamed up with other creators to bring you. If you're interested in checking out our courses, you can use the code YouTube10 and get 10% off everything. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.